Today we're going to talk about something. I, I've been thinking about how I used to write tales for the wiki that were set in like a versus sort of context where it would be like this SCP versus this SCP. And I thought long and hard about it and they, they were doing well, but they weren't doing spectacularly so because they were essentially just readings. So I decided today I was going to try and, after being inspired by a conversation I had with another YouTuber, uh, try and do something similar, except I'm just going to walk you through the scenario in a more, you know, serious, in-person sort of way. So today, we're going to talk about how the U.S. military would deal with SCP-096. So the very first thing we have to think about is, when we talk about SCP-096, which canonical representation of it is there? And out of the details that we have, what does that mean uh, the SCP will actually be capable of doing? SCP-096 is capable of, a fair, has a very, very strong regenerative factor. If you look at his face, he'll come and find you, and he will kill you in about a second or so. Now, we've done a video way back when, talking about how, like, if everyone in the world got saw a picture of SCP-096, um, it really wouldn't be as huge a deal, but on limited scales, just a couple hundred people, uh, they all die pretty quickly. When it's 7 billion people, it takes decades for him to kill everybody. And by that point, you're going to have more people born, so on and so forth. But the U.S. military is going to use every tool at its disposal. So assume for a second that in our context of our, this is our scenario, the SCP Foundation either doesn't or just stopped existing. Every facility, every cage, every employee, every single bit of knowledge they have about SCPs, poof, gone. And all that's left are all of the anomalies. Now the, <laughs> now the U.S. military uses a number of weapons in active service. We're going to probably work from, say, the U.S. Army or a National Guard standpoint. Now, the thing it's important to remember here is that U.S. military t can't technically act on uh, U.S. soil for domestic, like, policing. Uh, so the first responders are going to be the actual police uh, before they realize that maybe this is a little outside the scope of what they can do. And they're going to be using small arms almost exclusively. Small arms on SCP-096 can slow it a little bit, but that's the most you're going to get out of it. Like, you can you can knock all the meat off of his bones and still his bones will be fine. Uh, his bones are not necessarily indestructible. They are, as far as the SCP Foundation knows, indestructible because they've never managed to be able to cause any damage or permanent damage to them. But the rest of him is very destructible. So... Also, in context, we have to think about what that means for his, like, joints. So is the cartilage and stuff that connects his bones to other bones indestructible, too? It's a good question to ask. For our sake, we're going to assume so, and that it can continue to move without flesh and meat, for example. The police would probably send in their SWAT teams, everything that they could possibly muster, and shoot it a lot. That's what... <laughs> That's what police do with uh, things they don't understand or things that scare them. Um, after a while, uh, they would all probably be dead because they wouldn't have the time or uh, knowledge to know that you can't look at its face. And they would all have looked at its face and it would go one by one and one and kill them. And at this point, wider society is going to learn about this threat. It's going to be on the news. Uh, there'll be a hashtag, you know, uh, cancel SCP 096 party. Or I'm sorry, shy guy. Cancel the shy guy party. Uh, and lots of thoughts and prayers from politicians. <laughs> and then we will move into the military response because the military will almost certainly realize that this is not something that domestic police can handle and they'll start working on solving the problem as best as they can. We're going to see an upgrade in the arms uh, used against this thing, but none of it's going to matter. I, I could list off, you know, the active service. So, see, the Ar U.S. Army uses the Sig Sauer Model 17 modular handgun system. Yeah. I mean, but the modular hand, like, it, none, none of it's going to matter because these are not, the, the 
calibers we're talking about are not going to solve the problem. <laughs> there, there's not enough. There's not enough power. There's not enough force behind these bullets. Uh, so they're going to upgrade now. Uh, Infographic Show did something recently talking about the most powerful guns that the U.S. military has uh, available. The traditional, like, s still smallish arms. Um, none of these. It, it's not going to do anything. The caliber is not high enough. There's not enough force. So we would move to bigger guns, the biggest things that we can think of. And and while there are still cannons available, most of them couldn't be brought to bear on a land target. Some of them could. You could get howitzers and that kind of stuff going on. But by and large, you're just going to see boom, boom, boom. And, and early on, you're going to have a lot of problems with the people seeing the face and getting killed. And I say early on because eventually people are going to figure out what's going on and stop it. Like, U.S. military is not made up of a bunch of idiots. <laughs> they will figure out that you can't look at its face or that if you look at its face, you're dead. That will be something that is determined fairly quickly, although you could lose a couple hundred to thousands of people before that clicks. But it will click before any widespread problems. Now, issue here is... The press covering it, of course, will cause all sorts of problems when people see its face on news. So purging that will become its own thing. But we're not focused too heavily on that yet. What's going to happen is the U.S. military will upgrade and upgrade and upgrade because it's going to keep killing and they're not going to be able to stop it. So eventually they're going to start dropping the biggest bombs that they can drop on it, the conventional warheads. And then, yes. The next possible option will move into nuclear weapons. Now, this is the problem, and this is what the SAP Foundation is supposed to teach as a lesson, right? Destroying things you don't understand and that don't follow the basic laws of physics doesn't make sense. Humans, us as humans, really think about, like, if something scares us and we don't understand it, the first thing we really want to do, blow it up, destroy it, get rid of it. The unknown is scary, and the scary needs to go away. But let's say we nuke SCP-096. And let's say for the sake of argument that that's enough, that vaporizes the SCP. But this is not something that obeys the laws of physics. There's nothing to say, and this is very, this goes back to the wood chipper in the GOC, um, the individual atoms. Yes, you have vaporized it. You've separated it into its constituent atoms, but it doesn't obey the laws of physics. Those constituent atoms might move on their own towards targets anyway and do the exact same thing that they would have done if they weren't separated out into constituent atoms. So in the end, when you're dealing with something that doesn't make any sense, believe it or not, and we could talk about the cost of this too, like... <laughs> The handgun rounds, those are pretty cheap. The big high caliber cannons, those are significantly more expensive. Conventional bombs, hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars. Nuclear bombs, millions of dollars. Intercontinental ballistic missiles, delivery systems, millions of dollars. <laughs> the lives of the people who are lost in this enga engagement, you know? But there's one solution. And it's very good. And it will cost almost nothing. And that's a opaque bag over its head. That's it. That's all you need to do. Once you understand how it works, once you understand how SCP-096 works, all these guns, all these bombs, everything makes no sense at all. You just put a bag over its head. You know what it does. You know, you know how to cord it off. You know how to keep it out of the media. And by the way, the media is not that dumb. Let me, let me be clear here. Media are not made up of a bunch of idiots either. Everything we see in movies and stuff make it out like the police or the military or the media or just the, the grand human population are the dumbest motherfuckers that you've ever met in your entire life. The media, knowing that images of this thing will lead to people's deaths, would not continue to put them in front of people. So the, lim the, the damage would, would still happen. But it would be very limited, and it would be taken down by everybody who could take it down. And by the way, if you're thinking about how weapon tracking systems might work for any of the previous sets up here, like, you don't need to look at a target with an advanced tracking system. Like, you can just, they're, like, 
even if SCP-096 doesn't generate any heat of its own, which I personally don't think is true, even if it doesn't generate any heat of its own, it has to move on the ground, and it moves quite quickly. It's going to generate some friction there. Like, tracking it through heat is very easy. Anyway, that's it. I just wanted to talk a little bit about how... Uh, <laughs> How would the S how would the US military deal with the SCPs that we'd in interact with? And if you like this kind of video, let me know down in the comments down below because this is the kind of thing I'm thinking about doing more of, like with other SCPs. Like how would society deal with SCP-049 and so on and so forth? And then hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. I say this every time now, but I don't want it to get lost in the shuffle. Hitting the subscribe button is super important, especially if you enjoy this kind of content. You want to see more of it. It'll show up in your feeds and all these other things, you know, most of the time, as long as YouTube's not fucking up. And then head on over to patreon.com forward slash D Sumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including Dr. J Redacted and Vivi, who have both pledged at $100 and Morgan, who has pledged at $40. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here and I will see you all again on Thursday.